I'm not the only one excited for the Yumi Super. It costs 210 bucks, and the specs are pretty super. You can even sign up on Yumi's website for a chance to win a $70 coupon, which would bring the price down to about 140 bucks, and that's insane. The standout specs here are 4 gigs of RAM, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and the aluminum body. Again, based on the specs alone, I would have replaced my Xiaomi Redmi 3 with this Yumi Super, but sadly I promised my buddy I would give this phone to him, so I'm stuck with my Redmi 3 for now. So again, some great specs here, but let's see whether the phone is worth it. The phone looks and feels impeccable. It's made out of an aluminum unibody with plastic strips on the top and the bottom. The design is minimal and clean. It feels solid and expensive, but along with that comes the weight. This phone is pretty heavy. I'm quite happy with the size here. As you guys know, 5.5-inch phones are usually too big for me. And I have to say that the Super is actually pretty usable even for me with small hands. You have two capacitive buttons on the bottom that do not light up and are not painted on, which is a weird choice. And a light up Halo home button as well. The Halo glows different colors and doubles as a notification light. Call me cheesy but I've always liked Halo style buttons, and the speed at which the Halo pulses is also very soothing to watch. I really like the look of the side bezels and the subtle chamfers as well, just screams quality. The power and volume buttons are on the right and are really good quality, and the SIM tray is on the left. There's only two spots, so it's either dual SIM or single SIM and a microSD card. You also have a quick launch button that will instantly launch into an app, but this only works when the phone is unlocked, so it's a little less useful here. On the bottom is the speaker grill and the USB-C ports. The back of the Yumi is slightly curved. You have the camera flash and fingerprint scanner on the center line of the device and the Yumi logo below that. How good is the build quality? Well, I've played with the HTC 10, and I would say that the Yumi Super feels 99% as good as the HTC 10. Not only that, but this phone is quite compact for a 5.5 inch device, and it looks great from the back and the front. The build quality here goes toe to toe with flagships that cost 4 times as much, and I would go so far as to say I prefer the build quality here compared to the Galaxy S6 and the S7 because I prefer metal to glass phones, and they're less fragile. Yumi chose a 1080p panel made by Shark, and the panel looks great. When you're doing normal stuff, the screen looks good. But quote unquote normal stuff doesn't do the screen justice. When you look at colorful images or high quality videos, then you see how good the screen actually is. Color reproduction is on point, whites are white, blacks are black, red, green, and blues are deep and saturated. The display here can punch you in the gut with the right picture. The display goes up to around 450 to 500 nits, so you can see it fairly easily in direct sunlight. I have to say though that the lowest brightness isn't very dim, so it will burn your eyes in pitch dark conditions. The auto brightness is also pretty aggressive, often making it a tiny bit dimmer than it needs to be. They also have 2.5D Gorilla Glass 3, which I'm pretty sure is real as I dropped it from waist height onto ceramic tile and it survived. Not on purpose of course. The Gorilla Glass is also very smooth to touch. Not as smooth as a matte screen or a matte screen protector, but smooth enough. I absolutely love the display on the Yumi Super and in my opinion, Yumi made an excellent choice in this sharp panel. It is a top class display that can duke it out evenly with Samsung's AMOLED displays and top notch LCD displays as well. So far, the build quality and the display are on par with the best flagships. How does the speaker do? There is one downward firing speaker by the USB port, even though there are two speaker grills. Downward firing speakers cannot compete with front facing speakers, but are way better than rear firing speakers in general. Audio quality is decent as well. Highs and mids are pretty clear and there is a hint of bass. However, it is just about average and cannot compare with higher end speakers, but is definitely more than good enough for the average user. Have a listen for yourself. Yumi has made me a happy camper by putting a big 4000 mAh battery in this device. I've seen other reviewers complain about the battery and how it drains incredibly quickly, so I'm actually a little worried that battery life won't be great. Let's see what we got in testing. I did two tests. First I reloaded a webpage every 10 seconds and the phone died for 10 hours and 59 minutes. Then I looped the video until it died and it lasted for 12 hours and 2 minutes. Those results are really good, almost matching up to my Redmi 3's battery life. 
let's talk about the real life battery test before I make any comments about the battery. It was a 16 hour day with about 5 hours of screen on time. I snapped about 20 photos, streamed some music through Bluetooth for about 2 hours, watched YouTube for an hour, read some news on Reddit, and installed 2 huge games and I had 21% left. So that battery result is really really good. Again, it still isn't as good as my Redmi 3 which has a bigger battery, lower power processor, and a smaller screen, but I cannot drain this battery in a regular day when I can't use my phone throughout the entire day. Battery life is really good. Heavy users can get through one day no problem, medium and light users should be able to get two days, and fast charging works as well. I think the most recent software update must have fixed the battery issues that the other reviewers were talking about. We have completely stock Android 6.0 Marshmallow, and moving around in the UI is silky smooth. Swiping, opening, and closing apps is all super fast. I am very impressed with Yumi's optimization of the software, they did a great job. How's the fingerprint scanner? It's very reliable, it doesn't trip up often. Accuracy is definitely up there. When comparing to the iPhone 6 and the Nexus 6P, it's faster than the iPhone and a tiny bit slower than the Nexus. This is the first phone where I'm consistently using the fingerprint sensor on a daily basis and I like it. The sensor is always on so you can unlock your phone even when it's off. The notification light puzzles very pleasantly and if you stare at it too long like I said before, you are in danger of going into a full on zen state. You can customize the colors of certain notifications, but nothing too granular. You'll need to download something like Light Manager for that. They have added a bunch of options to the settings menu, but one big feature that isn't there is Double Tap to Wake. However, one of their big features they've been pushing is changing the on-screen software buttons. It is a nice feature to have, but why do you need it when you have physical buttons? There is one weird thing though, when using Google Play Music, small window will keep on crashing, requiring you to tap OK. That's a small annoyance though, and it doesn't happen anywhere else. The phone already proved itself to launch apps fast. What about multitasking? It's also great. With 4 gigs of RAM, almost all of you will never hit the max 4 gigs. I've hit 3.2 gigs once, and that's about as high as I could go. Switching between, I don't know, 40 or so apps and the phone still runs great. It can run the most intense games no problem, like Dead Trigger 2 and I even tried Epic Citadel and it was perfectly fine. Heat isn't an issue either, the phone does get warm during intense gaming but it never gets hot. I ran at 2.2 as well and got a score of about 50,000 which is decent for this chip. You get quad band GSM, 3G and LTE, but make sure it works on your carrier before buying it. Reception is good, I get 4G or LTE most places but it does jump back to 3G once in a while, but that's not an issue. I ran speed tests and for some strange reason whenever speed test was open it would not go to 4G, it stayed on 3G so I had to do a 3G test instead. I did download a couple of 30 megabyte files on 4G and they downloaded in about 10 seconds each so that's really really good. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi also both work well, I find Wi-Fi speeds are pretty fast on this device. GPS quality is also quite decent, the phone never lost position once while guiding me through traffic back home. Yumi used a 13 megapixel Panasonic sensor in this camera. The camera takes sharp photos consistently, and that consistent part is important. What's not so consistent is the color reproduction. Sometimes the pictures will look dull with no light, and other times the phone will take a photo with absolutely great color and saturation. This inconsistency has me frustrated, and I'm quite sure it has something to do with bad focusing either the hardware, but most likely software. I tried replacing the stock camera app with a Google camera, and focusing is a little better, but not that much better. HDR doesn't help either. HDR actually makes the pictures look worse, which I do find a little strange. The camera records decent 1080p video that is decent, but not impressive. The front camera takes some decent selfies, so for all you Snapchatters and Instagrammers, it's not great, but it's not going to be terrible either. The focusing software or hardware is the real issue here. It seems to have issues focusing on the right object and color corrects terribly. But focusing issues aside, the camera can take some really nice shots, you just have to set it up right. This phone MSRP is for about 220 bucks, but with some searching on coupons, you can get that down to about 200 bucks. And if you're lucky enough to get that $70 coupon, you could potentially be paying 130 bucks for this. I mean, just the build quality alone is almost enough to justify that price. That impeccable full body aerospace grade aluminum at least according to Yumi. Then you have a sharp screen with very punchy colors, stock Android with great optimization and performance, great battery for everyone, and a good fingerprint sensor, so what's to hate? Two things, well actually one and a half. The second doesn't affect everybody. First the camera. The camera takes inconsistent photos, but has great potential. If you take a look at some of my shots, some of them look so good while others are just dull. 
and this is most probably because of the focusing software. Again, if this is fixed, then maybe the camera can live up to its potential. Second is the size. Even though I can use it comfortably, I'm still sticking with my Redmi because my Redmi is extraordinarily compact for a 5-inch phone, something even this compact 5.5-inch phone cannot touch. Overall, Yumi has knocked it out of the park. This is definitely something I recommend highly even with the camera issues. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Be sure to check out any of my other videos and be sure to hit subscribe as well.